Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing well and had a good weekend. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at a new uh, application, a new container. In fact, it even says in the GitHub page that this is still very rough around the edges. So uh, what we're gonna take a look at today is actually something called Scrutiny. And it is a web GUI, a web graphical user interface uh, for smart monitoring. So if you're not familiar with smart monitoring, that is something that a lot of uh, manufacturers are putting into hard drives to be able to report data about your hard drive as far as um, dying sectors, how long it's been on, how many times it's been booted up, a lot of the things that you might wanna know about your hard drive so you can keep tabs on it uh, before it actually fails and you lose your data. So there are a couple of different ways that we can install this. And we're gonna take a look at both of them, uh, one more than the other, but I just wanna kind of show a couple of different ways to run this application. So if we jump over to my desktop here, uh, this is uh, Analog J's scrutiny page. Uh, if we scroll down just a little bit here, uh, we can see right here, uh, web UI for uh, smart monitoring. And right here, scrutiny is a work in progress, still has some rough edges. So here we can kind of get an idea of what this looks like uh, when it's uh, up and running, but this is just kind of the, the front facing. There's actually quite a bit more data uh, as, as long as your hard drive some more supports uh, smart monitoring. So a couple of different things we can do here. If we scroll down, I, all of this will be linked in the description uh, down below as per usual. Uh, if we scroll down, we can look uh, right here and we can just run this command right here. Uh, of course, if you're already, if you already have something on 8080, you can change that, uh, but you would just run this in, in an SSH command uh, and then your, your container will spin up and you're good to go. The problem here, uh, I, I guess, is that this doesn't have any persistent data volumes in it. And uh, if we wanna have historical data and things like that, we're gonna need that. So uh, what we'll actually do is come over here uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna kind of take uh, this uh, from uh, Linux server. The problem is uh, that this read only needs to be over on this side. Uh, so we're gonna change that. Uh, but this is basically what we're gonna use to deploy this on our server so that we can have persistent data. Uh, if we come over, uh, this is not the one I'm looking for. This is. All right, so this is my main server here. This is my Bruce Banner server. Uh, so if we come over here to containers, uh, here we can see that I've got scrutiny up and running. But what I wanna do here uh, is actually go ahead and kill it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove that and all of its persistent data. And then I'm gonna come over here to my modified uh, information. Uh, this will also be linked in the description uh, with a little note down here of uh, something we'll need for later. So uh, let's come back over here. Uh, let's go into our stacks. Uh, let's scroll down to where scrutiny is already residing. Uh, I'm just gonna edit this. I'm just gonna paste that in there. Uh, and that, that just adds this. Um, all of this is very, very standard. Here we've got our, our image, our container name. Uh, we're gonna run this as privileged so that it can have uh, access to your hardware. Uh, the PUID, PGID we've talked about. Time zone, that's gonna be uh, unique to you. Uh, the scrutiny API endpoint, don't change this line. Uh, even if you change the ports here, don't change the port here. It breaks everything, doesn't work. Keep in mind, this is still a work in progress, still some rough edges. So, uh, so we're gonna have scrutiny web uh, true. That's gonna give us our, our UI that we can look at. And then uh, the collector is also true. That's where it's gonna get the data that it needs to populate that information. Um, these are the two uh, volumes that we saw in uh, over here uh, for the hard drives. And then uh, this is gonna be our persistent data uh, storage. I'm gonna change that to seven. You can see I've tested this quite a bit while trying to figure some things out. Uh, so basically everything else in here is good to go. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just click on the blue button here. Uh, deployment is in process. Uh, if we open up the logs here, we can see all of this looks good and it's listening on port 8080. It's not, but it thinks it is. So then what we can do is come back. Uh, we'll just pop our little uh, link there and nothing has happened. We actually have to manually uh, instigate this to, to go. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this. Uh, this is actually the same thing that I've got in the notes right down here, uh, but I stored it because I kept losing it and kept having to redeploy a bad container or a new container that wasn't working to get that. So I just made a note of it there. So what we'll do now that we're back on our server here uh, is we'll come over into our console uh, icon there. We're gonna click connect. And then we'll just right click and say paste. And now it's going, it's, it's created this JSON file uh, that if we come back over here and refresh, now we can see that I've got two hard drives that support smart technology. 
Uh, this is an SSD, a uh, couple of years old. And then this is where all of my data is. And it's quite a bit older at almost five years. Uh, of course, this is why I really need a new hard drive for my server. <clears throat> so if we come into here and we look uh, and we click on view details, uh, not much going on as far as uh, the SSD, for whatever reason, uh, no information is available. I don't know if it's a communications issue or an incompatibility issue, uh, but again, this is a fairly new application. Again, still rough around the edges. I know they're still working on it quite a bit. So let's view the details here. And here's where we can see uh, all of the smart ATA attributes, uh, all of the information, like this one's kind of got me worried here, that I do have a failed status on uh, this current pen, uh, pending sector count. Uh, we can take a look, there are more attributes um, and there's just lots of information in here. Uh, I've got another warn right here. Uh, so this has got me a little bit nervous as far as uh, needing to get this drive replaced and all my data moved over. I also now, and, and that's basically it. This gives you an idea of what's going on here. Uh, if we if we look here, we can see we've been powered on for 4.7 years. This is a NAS drive. It's a, it's a WD Red NAS. Uh, so I'm not terribly worried about it having been powered on for so long, but again, five years, quite a while. So, uh, and then uh, this shows a graph of your historical data as far as temperatures are concerned down here. Uh, right now, I've only got one data point uh, because I just created a new persistent data volume. Uh, but if we come back over, uh, we scroll down, uh, eventually this will time out and just take you back to a command prompt. Uh, I think maybe I can force that, I can. So I'm just gonna repaste that just so we can see something here. Uh, if we come back over and hit refresh, now we've got two data points. We've got one here uh, from just a few minutes ago, and then one right now. Uh, the, the the time zone is wrong. It's off by six hours, but uh, that is what's going on. Now we've got historical data to show that. So uh, basically, anytime you want uh, updated information about your container, or your sorry, not your container, your hard drives, you will have to manually come in here and run uh, this command. Uh, again, I'll just run that real quick. We'll come back over here and we'll refresh. And now we actually have three data points. So anytime you want new data points, you're gonna to have to manually run that, that command, at least for the time being. So now what I wanna do is actually show you what happens if you try to install this on a, a device that doesn't have any uh, smart, K or smart compatible devices attached to it. So we're gonna come over to here. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna re-grab this, all right, there. Then we'll come back over and we'll go to containers. I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm not gonna reinstall it. It's installed already. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just jump over to here. And uh, this is uh, my little Tanix server. Uh, it's got a built-in 32 gig or 64 gig eMMC chip on it. And I don't have any other devices plugged into it. Uh, so apparently this eMMC chip isn't uh, smart compatible. In fact, if I come into uh, Portainer here and I go into here, um, and I just run, nope, I need to come over to here and grab this. Grab that command and we just run this and click go. Uh, it says it did something, but here you can see I'm already back to the command prompt. And that tells us that something went wrong. Uh, it should have collected more data than that. And so I come back and refresh, nothing changed. So this device doesn't have any smart data or smart uh, data compatible uh, drives in it. So you're not gonna get anything in that. I haven't tested this on a Pi. I don't know if it'll work. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably not. Uh, let's actually come back over to here. Oh, I lied. Uh, if you use the Linux server version, this should work on ARM processors as well. So any of your Raspberry Pis or anything like that should work just Fine. But I think that pretty much covers everything. Again, this is a fairly simple uh, application as far as our, our, our end of it. I don't want to take away from what the developer is doing. I'm actually really stoked that I can now come in here and make myself super paranoid about my hard drive status. So uh, if you want to check this out, definitely do that. Let me know in the comments uh, if you did, what you found out, uh, that sort of thing. I'd actually love to hear uh, what you found out about your hard drives in this case. Also, I mentioned all of this will be available in the uh, description down below. There are a couple of links down there that I'd appreciate if you check out. One's a coffee link. That's like a one-time tip jar. If you found the video helpful, want to kick me a couple of bucks, that's the way to do it. Or if you want to become a patron, uh, I've got four different levels of patronage that you can sign up for. Uh, the three, five, and $10 levels will give you access to my content early when that's available. Uh, the five and $10 levels, however, will also give you access to a patrons only Discord server. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, definitely check that out as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up uh, here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.